uh, my husband's family lives in Pennsylvania, and so when we go up on holidays, we pass this place all the time, and we tried to figure out for years what this was. And, and, and my husband and I kind of finally decided, well, maybe it's the CIA. You know? <laughs> Well, we're going to take questions from the audience, but there are rules, and this, the rule is kind of simple. Rob, standing over here, has the microphone. For everybody in the room to be able to hear your question, you have to use the microphone. And uh, we'll ask just one question per person, because I believe we're going to have a lot of questions tonight. So hold up your hand, and Rob will bring you the microphone, and we'll try to get around the room as best we can. And please do use the microphone. Question, how did you get this part that you have to try out for it and had you been in any movies before this one? I, I had not done any, I didn't even know about movies. I didn't know anything about anything, really. I was just a dumb little kid in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, my mother had been an actress in the local town and town theater. And when the cattle call went out, does everybody know what a cattle call is? It's when they let people know about movies are coming. Uh, then her uh, theater director, James Hatcher, um, said, why don't you bring little Mary in? She's about the right age, and, and she looks like she could be Gregory Peck's daughter. And, and so uh, the, the, when they came, uh, well, first, they, the, uh, she had to go get permission from my father to take me down. And uh, you have to understand, my dad was born in like 1898, <laughs> and he was uh, kind of Victorian in his thinking. And uh, so mother asked him, and he naturally said no. <laughs> and my mother, she was really sharp, and she was this beautiful English beauty. And um, she said, now, Henry, dear, what are the chances the child will get the part anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. You hadn't even seen a movie before you were cast in your first one and then Oscar nominated for your very first film. Uh, next question. Noticing that in your scenes with Gregory Peck, uh, there seemed to be more of a connection there. And uh, I thought from, from both sides, you seemed to have a real rapport. Did you did you feel that as well? Or? Definitely, we had a very tight relationship, um, and Atticus was so. What you see up on the screen is what we got at home. And after making this film, um, his daughter Cecilia, we were together a couple weeks ago, I stayed at her house, and she said, you know, it's hard to tell where Atticus leaves off and Gregory Peck begins because they were so much alike. And Veronique, when we were at the White House, um, was that last week? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of brain dead here. Um, she said if he had been a lawyer back then in a small southern town, he, she could see him doing that, taking that case with no problem. I love that how for years after making the film, you would get a call out of the blue and he would call you what on the phone? <laughs> Scout. And I called him Atticus, you know. It's, we just had such a tight relationship because during the making of the film, you have to understand, we were five months making this film. So we really did become a family in front of the camera and behind the camera. Whitey, our prop manager, and all those guys that, you know, helped to create this beautiful film, the lighting guys and that, they were wonderful. But Atticus would call and, and the other thing you have to understand is that I lost my parents very early in my life. My mom died three weeks after I graduated from high school. 
And my dad died two years after I got married. I didn't get married until I was 21 because I promised him that I wouldn't because I didn't think girls had sense enough to know anything before they were 21. I probably could have waited a little longer, but... <laughs> um, so, you know, the guys in the film were really great about calling and checking up on me. And when you're living in a house trailer in the middle of a field in Lochapoca, Alabama, getting blown away by tornadoes, and you pick up the phone and it's Gregory Beck, you doing all right? How you doing, kiddo? It's like, that can make your day in about a half a second. Um, I joke a lot of times, well, it's not really a joke, that I had reverse Oreo daddies. And the reason being that um, my other daddy from Mockingbird was Brock Peters. And he played Tom Robinson. And Brock and I were so tight. He and Dee Dee were just so dear. And, um, you know, we stayed very, very close um, up until right before he passed away. Um, so I had wonderful male role models. These guys were so intelligent. My father was very much an Atticus. He was wonderful. And then to have Gregory Peck and Brock Peters and Paul Fix, who played the judge, and just everybody involved. Alan Pakula, who was our producer, was such a gentleman. He, he was just absolutely wonderful. And we had just rekindled our relationship up at the Pecks. Uh, we had been up there for dinner right before he was killed on the New Jersey Turnpike, and that really tore me up uh, to lose him because we had made some plans to get together, and I felt cheated because I never got that chance to be with him again, and that really was upsetting. Uh, I, Evan, as I've heard the stories, I realized you had a charmed life, but um, we're kind of charmed that you're still here. You're the ambassador. Uh, another question from the audience. Oh, a young man, I like this. I was wondering what some of the funnest scenes were to do, to act out. <laughs> oh, I would say probably uh, one that you would enjoy or that is the tire scene. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Um, according to Philip, who played Jim, we used to have pretty knock-down, drag-out fights, which would be kind of normal. You've got these two boys, and they're off doing their boy things, right? And here's this bratty little girl that they've got to, you know, tagging around after them. And who else was I going to play with, right? You know. Um, but they wanted to do their guy stuff. So after a while, they got pretty tired of me, you know. And we had this scene coming up, so they figured, okay, we'll fix this. We'll just kill her. <laughs> So what you don't see is off to the side there's this big utility truck. And they took this tire and rolled it as hard as they could right into this utility truck. And, of course, the studio didn't much care for that. So <laughs> too bad I'm still here, you know. Um, but then they put in a stunt double uh, to do, <laughs> do the rest of it. So you'll see me right at the beginning, and then I get right at the end, right into the step. And that somehow or another ended up being done like more times than I care to talk about. <laughs> so. My wife wanted to know the stunt double. Who, whose parents said, no, put my child in the It <laughs> wasn't a child. Um, my stunt double was a, a little jockey from Santa Anita Racetrack. <laughs> So they can spare a jockey. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have a question for Mary? Yeah, I just learned today, of course, that this was our neighbor, Mr. Duvall's film debut. Yes. And he spent so very little time on camera. Did he, was he there much at all during filming for those five months? No, not really. Uh, not that I remember. Um, and and, and um, one, of, one of the things is, Bob Mulligan was a brilliant director. And because we were first time actors, he did not let us talk to or, or be involved with anyone uh, until we had worked with them. You know, he wanted that, that 
whole relationship to be real. Um, so, uh, like with Boo, the first time I see Bob Duval is when they open the door and it's 